Hi guys, welcome to my channel. Uh, I'd just like to do a short video uh, today uh, regarding this bad boy here. This is the HGP402. Uh, if you subscribe to my channel you'll see that I've put a couple of videos on. Uh, I'll show you how I've customised it by adding the driver, uh, 110 scale fuel cans, climbing rope, tow rope, chains. Uh, we also have lights um, which uh, I haven't got the remote control at the moment on me. Where's the remote control? Uh, oh, there's the remote control. I'll just show you with the remote control because we have two stage lights. Uh, when the remote control is on, as you can see, I've rigged it so that uh, the lights at the side actually flash the indicators, the tail lights. And that was because I'd actually got them so that every time I turned the steering, it indicated which way I was turning. Now, that's okay for using a road car, but for an off-roader, I thought it looked a bit naff. So what I've done is I've actually altered it. But uh, I don't know whether any of you are aware... Oh, try that again. I don't know if any of you are aware, but there's a little switch there. And if you press that, you can alter the way the lights go. Uh, with it at the top in H, uh, you just get like side lights and bright back lights. But if you flick it over to there, as you can see, I've got my two spotlights working at the front. Uh, the headlights also brighten up, as do the side lights, and you also get the flashing tail lights, and the two back lights go a little bit dimmer. Uh, I've got to be honest, when I actually found that out, I was over the moon off, that was absolutely uh, amazing. But, that's not why I want to do this video today. I've heard lots of rumours about how this, this vehicle here has two-stage settings for high and low ratio. But no matter how hard I've looked on the net, I couldn't find anything, anything at all. Um, and there is nothing at all in any of the literature that you actually get with the book, uh, with the car, sorry. It's, it's great if you want to order spare parts. Um, and, you know, it, 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 <laughs> it explains to you about where to put the stickers and things like that. But it doesn't actually tell you about how to change from low to high range or high to low range. It's actually set in high range, and I'm going to show you that now, and I'm going to show you exactly what I did to actually change it to low range. After we've done that, you'll also see a video that uh, I've done. Unfortunately, I haven't done one with it being in high range, um, because I've got videos of the high range driving on YouTube at the moment, uh, and on Google. But I will actually show you a video of it driving in low range and how brilliant the traction actually is compared to when it's in high range. So let's have a look and see how we do. First of all, you want to remove the body. So that's what we'll crack on with. Right, as anybody that has one of these and anybody that's actually into do with RC knows, it will have four pins. One, two, three, four. Now when you do a bit of customization on it, these two at the back, unless you've got the fingers of a five-year-old child, which I don't have, they are a little bit difficult to get out. Now these ones, superb, no problem whatsoever, but spend a little bit of time, small pair of pliers, grab a hold, and out they come. And it means that you, you know, once you've got the pins off, you don't end up like that, which is a bad thing. Then, the body, just lifts off. Now I know it looks a little bit untidy under there, and that's because of how we did the lights. Uh, you can see the light bundle there actually going into the light box, which if I just very quickly grab the camera. I hope that's in focus. You can see down there. But the bit that we actually want to get to is down in there. And that's what changes it from high to low. Now, now I'm not going to do it. Uh, what I'm actually going to do was, because it was it was a pain in the neck to do. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to point to it and I'm going to explain to you exactly what it was that I did. So, I've just got my torch. And I'll show you now exactly what I did. Just hold on a second. Sorry. I'm not an octopus. Right, I hope you can pick that up. 
that is the part that you want there when it's over here there it actually states high range when it's in the configuration that I've got it in at the moment it's low range now in order to change that it's a little bit awkward like I say but all you do is remove the battery compartment there obviously disconnect and take out your battery uh, which obviously is you know, as easy as that um, and then using the tool that actually came with the vehicle Oh, did he come with my Cheerson? I can't remember. I don't know whether the tool actually came with my Cheerson or whether it came with this. I'm not sure. But with a suitable sized Allen key. Undo that and take it out completely. Completely remove it. And then once you've done that, you're very easy. Move your finger, pull it out a little bit, move your finger across. And it will then go into L, which is on the other side of there, which is low range. Once you've done that then, Go back, tighten up your alum key, replace your battery compartment, put your battery back in, reconnect everything back together, like so. Put your body back on, onto your body posts. Now I've got mud flaps, I've put mud flaps on mine. And it's a bit of a pain in the neck because they do tend to get caught on the rear of the body. And then just Get your small pair of pliers again, and that makes it a lot easier to get those pins in like that. As you can see, you don't come out looking like your fingers just been through a mince machine. I'll put the last one on there, like so, and that's it. And now, what we'll do is, we'll have a look at the video of the uh, very small assault course that I made earlier on, and uh, you'll be able to see the difference in grip that the low range makes. Trust me, there is no way that I would have been able to have done this as easily with a vehicle in high range. Um, with a vehicle in low range, it's exactly the same as a genuine full-sized 4x4 uh, Mitsubishi Toyota Land Rover. Um, they work a lot better in low range than they do in high range when you need extra grip. So, without further ado, check out this video. Right, so here we can see the small assault course that I made. As you can see, it's made out of two car ramps with a couple of little bits of wood attached. Because no matter how much I tried, I could not get over the lip at the top. Now you're going to have to take my word for this, when I first tried this the front wheels skidded like nobody's business because I didn't have the control over the speed. As you can see I've got perfect control over it there and it's brilliant. It just does not lose grip at all. In this shot you can actually see just how narrow it is and how little grip, little the tyres actually had to grip to the metal. Uh, and as you can see, they did it brilliantly. This one slightly slowed down. And there we go, look at that. Gotta say, as time went on and my confidence grew, I did get a little bit more cocky. Now I do know that they also say that pride comes before the fall. Luckily enough, when I was doing this, there was no fall. I was absolutely over the moon with the way that it actually performed. And this was the last run of the day, and uh, well, I'll let it speak for itself.
to say I can't praise this vehicle enough uh, for an entry level 4x4 it's unbelievable it really is such great value for money I would love to get another scale off-roader like this but apart from this one and possibly with the exception of the short wheel base I think it's the 601 and the 6x6 that HG always, always uh, sorry that HG do as well there is nothing out there within this price range they either look like kiddies monster trucks uh, that you would you know you'd give to a, an eight year old or a five year old or something like that not something that you can actually get into your RC with and it's a shame because there is a real niche in the market you either go for something like this or you go for something like a, a Tamiya or something you know something along those lines which cost a lot lot more uh, it's just a real shame so if there are any manufacturers out there please start making these more within this price range let's have more of these so that we've got a wider range of what we can choose from in the meantime because I don't suppose that's going to happen overnight I hope you enjoyed the video please subscribe by clicking the link about here uh, and uh, keep an eye on my channel um, I also as you can see from behind me fly the quadcopters and uh, I like to put the videos up there if you haven't seen them check them out please leave a comment in the comment box below and uh, I'll see you next time and until until we do meet again happy RCing <laughs>